Shoop. Come on. There, I did it. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel um, and welcome back to all the new followers who've signed on over the last few days. It's great to see you. Um, my watercolour little uh, instructional video turned out nicely and uh, I've had lots of followers from that so thank you very much for that and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're in Wiltshire, a long way away from Edinburgh, right at the very south of England really. So we're, we're visiting people at the moment and going around all over the place. So I'm going to be trying a little landscape here and we've been traveling around these roads for quite a long time and it's really difficult to find a composition here because when you see a composition um, there's nowhere to park so you're, you're down these little country lanes and uh, so it's been really tricky. We've had a lot of frustration for trying to find the right spot and finding the right spot is is really difficult. Uh, it is the most frustrating part of painting for me but we found a spot now and this is the this is what we're going to do but it, it's it's a nice open very English landscape this is a classic English scene and I love it it's it's really nice I'm going to tackle a small painting because it's quite late in the day now and um, I don't think I could do anything more than that it's sunsets probably an hour or so so we haven't got too much time to do this I forgot my sketchbook so that's a bit irritating I would have liked to have done a little uh, little sketch of this to see what the composition is going to be. It may look simple, but it's not that simple. So I would have loved to have my sketchbook. And one of the things when you travel by train places and co traveling places that I always forget something. So anyway, right, just gonna map out the, the composition that I've got. And uh, it looks simple, but it's not simple. It's really not, not a simple composition, this. It's, it's much more complicated than it seems. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just mixing up a little bit of ter uh, white turpentine and uh, raw umber just to see what I've got. I've got a nice toned board here as well which um, is sort of bluey, bluey colour but that's a standard for me. It, you, you, you've, got to, you've got to get rid of the white so okay there's lots of layers coming in there's a nice, nice sort of where the tractors come in, there's some lines coming in here and that will lead you into, into the scene. Composition is a really important part and it's a very underrated skill. And I, I'd, I'd, I'd largely ignored it for many years and um, I thought it was a simple process, but uh, it wasn't. So something I have had to learn. There we go, and then it goes down. And we've got a little house over there, which I'll put, pop in. So I'm just indicating things, really, just working out in my mind where things are going to go, the far distant hills over there. One of the lovely things about England are the patchwork fields. OK, so that's, that's the basic composition there. Right, so the next thing to do, as always, is to get some, get some colour mixing done. <clears throat> Trying to get a few pools of colour to work on later on. So a uh, little bit of burnt umber, maybe. There, mix it in. I always need these. I, they, they, they act as wells of colour and I find an essential bit of preparation for the picture. And uh, green, the green fields in the distance. Looks a nice colour. Right, now we're going to get some sky colours in there. So a little bit of cobalt blue, just quite a strong colour. The sky is very light at the moment so it's mainly white. The clouds are very pretty though, they, there's, a, there's a lovely redness to them. Right so that's, that's all my colours mixed up, not too many colours, um, it's not a, not a wide ranging colour scheme here. So I'm going to start at the top and this is the underpainting really, so that's that's turpentine in there which is my first medium we're going to use. So I'm going to put a bit of blue in there, um, maybe a bit more blue, and I'm going to start at the top of the picture. So right at the very top where it's much blue I'm going to start 
adding colour. A little bit thicker than that. So this is turpentine, so I'm hoping that it's going to dry quite quickly. It's been so wet round here, I, I can't venture any more in the fields because it's so wet, my feet would be drenched. Uh, I don't have any Wellingtons with me. Great, so that's the first top bit and it gets lighter as it comes down. So just brushing it in really, so ho hoping this is going to dry quickly. And then maybe that colour, get the mauves in the distance. Not trying to be too careful at, at the beginning. Um, I never like to be too careful anywhere, but um, it's, it's especially important at the beginning just to get the colours down. And I do the same for watercolour as well. Um, many, many watercolour artists don't like doing that. They like to, be, they like to build up in, in sort of gentle layers, but I'm not into that. Okay, now going into the, to the far distance, there's, I, I, I like to work from, from back to front really. So the, the far distance, so I'll paint the hills and then I'll paint the next bit over the top and the next bit over the top. So working from the back to the front is always good for me. Right, again, they're quite blue in the distance. So dipping into my sky colours for the furthest bit away, uh, just for the first layer. So I'll do, the, I'll do the aerial perspective says that the things that are further away are bluer. So I'm going to paint the trees a bluish colour, right in the distance there. And then the field below, that's it, I'll use that, is, is a yellowy. No, I haven't mixed any yellowy colour in. So a little bit of yellow now, I think that's a bit green. My voice is a little bit uh, hoarse at the moment. I heard a little, <laughs> when I came down by train, I must have picked up some sort of bug. It's always the way in winter. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's a nice sort of, to try and depict the field in the distance. Here. And I'm going to pick the green fields. So just blocking in really. Nice green field there. Some of my favourite pictures are of this type of scene. Um, they're, they're so evocative of, of Britain and particularly England. The patchwork quilts almost of the fields. I love that. Okay, so I've got the little fields in. Now I'm going to start to paint the, the trees. Um, it's winter time, so there's a lot of brown in the trees. Uh, maybe not quite as red as that, so that was burnt umber. So now I'm going to try uh, raw umber. And they are, so they're in front of the, the trees in the distance. It's quite an interesting colour, that. Very different colour scheme from Scotland. We need a lot of seascapes which tend to be quite blue, so this is the opposite of that. So just trying to block in these lovely scenes. Always trying to work out what's going to please my eye and paint that. Okay, there's a little fence. So just working from top to bottom. And now there's a farmer's field is coming in now, so paint the, the hedge, which comes in here, and dips down. And then we have the, the farmer's field, which is being ploughed, but lots of other plants in it. So it's got some work to do there. So very roughly done. I'm not trying to be perfect at the moment. Um, perfection comes much later on. Perfection is a very interesting word as well because it means different things to different people. One person's perfection is another person's horror. So uh, I, I try to look at it within 
my perfection, which is different from other people's idea of what it is. Again, that's to do with aesthetics and what you think looks right. So these are the tracks. So just scrubbing it in. I'm near a place called Tisbury, uh, which is near Salisbury. A uh, very little, quaint little village. Very, very pretty. Old-fashioned village. Lots of little local shops in there. The big supermarkets haven't come there really, so very nice. Great, so that's, my, that's the first layer done there. So pretty quickly, just blocking in, giving me an idea of where things are going. So it, it's the basic plan done now. And um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just give it a few moments to dry off and think about it a bit more and, and then attack the second layer, which probably the last layer. So um, it's, 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 it's a fascinating part to see it come through like that. And I, I love this stage of it, it gives me hope. <laughs> Okay, so I've really got to, got to move on with this. That we've got about an hour, half, an hour or forty minutes till sunset, so we've got to get a move on. Right, so I'm going to start the second painting now, and this is the sky I'm going to do. So, uh, working over what I've done, and this, the the sky is so interesting today. It's a beautiful sky. I love the sky today. It's uh, it looks amazing. The the variation in colours. It is really nice and the the cloud color is so good too really going to try and capture the lightness in the sky a little bit of green in the sky as well now it's really really pretty see they just added a bit of greeny color into that almost like a haze in the distance. I'm, the medium I'm using now is um, turpentine and oil, so it's changed from just pure turpentine to this. All the way across here. It's quite pretty. When I see a, a paint mark which is pretty, and I've recognised it, I try and leave it. I don't, I don't go over it. Trying to get the lightness of that area underneath the cloud. And then it goes down to the, the bottom of the cloud and it's, it's a beautiful purple, grey coloured purple. Really attractive. It's these evening colours. Right in the distance here, you have this lovely colour of the sky. Beautiful mauve colour. Isn't that nice? And, in, in, and then sp sprinkled in between it are the lonesome clouds, which also have that, that colour in it. One of, the, one of the great things about painting outdoors um, is that it, it's constantly changing. And if you were to work from a photograph, it wouldn't change at all. And so, sometimes the picture gets worse when you're outside, but sometimes it gets better as well. And this is a case where it's getting better all the time. And if you'd just taken a photograph, you'd have just gone by now. Yay, Tanya's got it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put the, the front fields in now and they're half ploughed, so they're, they're, they're very, very brown cream colour. They're, they're, they're constantly changing, so no real set colour to them. Uh, so I'm just going to mix up lots of different colours and hope for the best. And then they go quite dark. Add the lights again. There's some nice puddles in there which I'll get, get to when I've Got a bit further with this painting. Something like that. Here we're coming to the tractor marks in the fields, which I think are uh, a really important feature of it, and that's going to give 
give a sense of something moving into the field, so it's going into it. And I, I think these sort of marks, compositionally, are really important. They give that sense of uh, going into a picture, really important. That works. And then on the left, there's a, some more tractor marks coming in. You can see how that worked. Right, now for the greens. And there's a great variety of green here. Getting that colours, all those colours in there. I should have put a little bit of cadmium yellow out, that would have helped it, but never mind. I'm trying to soften the tracks a little bit. Not quite so obvious. Trying to give the sense of it going down the hill too. Some darker greens. And down. There's a sort of field of I don't know, some last year's crop sort of spreading in from the left in a sort of speckledy manner. all the way down and then down here there's some remnants of it as well so what, what I what I really like in a, in doing a landscape is to really get the sense that I'm going into the picture I think that's a really important part of it so I'm always looking for ways to 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 make you go into the picture very light this chap's appeared in the distance and I'm going to try and pop him in there because it's a really good shape. He's got a green top. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> well, he have a hat on, did he? He disappeared so fast. Didn't give me any time at all to see him. Come back. Right, okay, now that, that is the the second painting done now and I've, I've basically indicated everything and I need to start losing my um, my filbert brushes and my, my, my hog's hair brushes and start going on for the smaller brushes to catch the little details of it so um, let's start with the tree line uh, there are lots of um, lots of uh, trees I'm going to indicate now some dark ones just to start trying to catch a little bit given the hints of hints of trees not interested in huge detail but just to hint enough to make people realize what what's going on that's, that's that one and there's a much lighter tree as well that comes in so try and capture the light trees now Uh, we really are approaching the end of the day, so there's a little bit of a rush on to finish it. And in the far distance, now I want to indicate a, a river in the distance, so it's a nice, I'm going to give it a nice light blue colour. paint on there and that's that's coming in right here and then it goes around the corner sort of um, meandering into the distance there are little little puddles in the field now which I'm going to try and get so they are light patches Trying to indicate how the tractors have come in, created those marks. So sodden, <laughs> it's a quite quite a nice touch to it. Really, gives it really gives a feel of what it's been like around here recently. Okay, that's nice. 
Right, and then we come to a little house in the distance. I'm running out of time a lot now. There's a house here, which I'm going to try and put in. Try and blowing me away. It's got a grey roof. Okay, try and get this this field edge in. So we really are running out of time. It's I can barely see now. Okay, so that house again. Just trying to make it a bit better. The hedgerows. Let's try and get those a little bit more interesting. Drama. Right, maybe a few more details on the trees and that might be it. Almost there. Darker section. Front of that, maybe. You can keep on going with these things forever, but at some point you've got to stop. As long as the you got, as long as you've got the sense of the fields going into the distance, that's that's what I love. Let's try and get a bit more green in there. Okay, last few tweaks of it, just to try and get as much as I've done now. I can barely see it now. Um, everything's a bit blurry. Lots of different coloured trees in there. So just trying to get a few bits of variation going. So much subtlety in a landscape. So the tops of the trees here. Right, I think that's got it. That's got it. But it's just a question of signing it now. Is it like a dog? <laughs> sort of. Trying to get your dogs in the picture. Just going to sign it in the bottom right quickly. I've had to put my glasses on. There's so little light at the moment um, that I can't see anything. P O T T. Not that you can really read that much, but it's there. Ah, oh, good enough. Lovely, there we go. Take my glasses off. And there's the picture. It's a little picture, uh, 10 by 8 inches. There was no way I was going to get any, anything bigger than that done in this, such a short time. It's, it's, uh, it's just too dark for that. Very gusty conditions as well, so... That's pushing the camera around a lot, but I, I've tried to get a lot into it. I've tried to give it a sense of depth to the picture, so uh, you, you feel that you can walk into the picture, and I think that's a really important part of the composition of it. And I've, I've really moved things around quite a lot to to give that sense and to give that sense of space in there. So I hope you like that. Right, I think we just about got that done. It's been a bit of a rush on it today. Light's really gone now. I don't know what the picture looks like in the camera, but it's really gone now. And uh, I, I like it. I think it's a really nice picture. I always say I like it, but I do like it. It's a really nice picture. And um, I like the colour schemes as well. Now, the classic, classic English scene is so attractive. I could do lots of paintings on that one. So there we go, I've signed it. And sorry about the noise in the background. There's a sort of tractors going on cutting hedges. So hope you, can, hope you didn't notice that too much. But uh, yeah, I, I'm really pleased. And, uh, and I hope you enjoyed it too. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.